made it in this tutorial well not, not a tutorial i'm gonna just give you guys insights of how i was able to get into fpv plus videography and combine it together call that fpv videography in this video i'm gonna be like you know introducing the steps that i took to learn fpv filmmaking so yo what's up my name is alan i've been doing this for about three years now well i've been doing videography for since 2017 professionally today's 2023 so 2023 minus 2017 that's about six years yeah six years now of videography but i've been doing fpv since 2020 so i've been doing fpv for about three years now since i already knew how to make videos i had to do was learn how to fly i, I didn't want to know how to solder until like i think six months later in like 2019 there's this brand called get fpv and iFlight. they make pre-built drones like for example i got this one pre-built from iFlight right here i think this is called nazgul and then i also got this uh protect 35 cinebook also from iFlight. cameras that i use on this drone actually is a gopro hero 10 and then i also use a GoPro Hero 8. The GoPro Hero 8 is still pretty good today and you can get an offer up really cheap. You don't have to buy a brand new if you're new. If you're new, I'd say just go with like a GoPro 6 on offer up. You can probably get one for like $50 to $100. GoPro 8s, I think they're running around like $200 right now. And what you can do if you're like into videography is... So this roll cage and ND filter is from... I think it's from Polar Pro. Yeah, it's from Polar Pro. So it comes in a pack of three. So it comes with the ND8, 16, and 32. And you would need it if you want to like, you know, put, keep your shutter double the frame rate. So if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, you want to have your shutter speed at 1 over 60. And if it's sunny outside, you're going to need one of these right here in the front. First step into learning to how to fly is there's this program called Steam on the internet. You download the app to your desktop. And then what you do is go find this flight simulator. It's, I think it's called Liftoff. Yeah, I practice in Liftoff. So basically you get one of these. This is actually the DJI FPV Mode 2. I think this is the first remote that they ever released. I never upgraded because I, I felt like I didn't need to. This is also very compatible with like the other drones too. So it's like, I heard like the new radios, it can't like connect to like these drones, I think. I don't know. That's why I heard on the internet. I, I don't know. That's just what I heard. Don't quote me on that. But the reason why I still have this is because it can connect to like the new DJI drones and it can connect to these drones as well. Yeah. So the drones that I have is the Protec 35. I got this one from iFlight as well. And then this is the Nazgo 5 inch quad. So this is the one that actually ripped down like waterfalls, sustained high winds. This one, I fly indoors. And in order to charge these drones, I use this charger right here. This is called a, I think it's called a, it's called Hobby Mate. Yeah, I bought this a long time ago. Like this is a, I think this is like a hundred dollars on Amazon, but I bought it because like this, this guy on YouTube told me that this is a very safe charger to charge light poles. So I just got it and it comes with two ports. This is called a parallel charging board. So basically you can charge like six, up to six batteries on here. So the batteries that I use are the 4S batteries. Yeah, so the batteries that I use are the Mini Star 1500 milliamps batteries. I also have the RDQ series 15 milli milliamps. Yeah, these are 4S batteries, 100 Cs. Yeah, I use these and what I do is that I plug this into here. So I plug the LiPo into the balance board and then the balance board goes into here and I plug this thing into the, into the wall. I know y'all can't see me, but I'm gonna get the lights. Let's see, let's see, a little bit better, a little bit better could use some work but you know it's better to get started than not so this is the first thing that i'm gonna be showing y'all how to use how to charge your light bulbs so this is the d6 dual pro hobby mate charger i bought this like three years ago i still use it today because it worked so here we go the hobby mate is now turning on so what, what i like to do is like i use this this balance board right here it's called the balance charging plate this can charge up to six lipo batteries but the battery that I run, it's a 4S battery. So I'm gonna teach y'all how I you know, charge my batteries because there's a specific way to charge these batteries. I didn't know that there was a way to recharge it. Yeah, let, let, let me practice with, you know, let me just take three, for example, three of these light bulbs. So these are 1500 batteries, 4S. This is what I like to do to find the actual voltage of this. So I'll plug it in, 15.2. I think y'all can see it, like, I'll zoom in later, but yeah, 15.2. So, okay, now that I know that rate, I can set it aside right here. Let's see this one. It's also 15.3. So these two could be charging together. Let's test out this one. Hopefully it's around the same. Also 15.3. So generally, if the difference in between voltages is 0.4, then y'all can charge, you can batch charge it together on this parallel um, charging board. So to do that, I just plug it in here. The XT60 cable, plug it in here. Plug this side into the 
the charging board it reads 4s so this thing charges 2s all the way up to uh, 6s you can also charge 6s batteries too if you fly with 6s but i fly with 4s personally so once i put all this together all right now that it's all together since these are 1500 amp batteries i like to pull up my phone because i'm not good at math put in a 1.5 times three batteries and then this is the rate that you'll be charging it at to be safe so over here one here so you go here bring it down to 1.5 times 3 equals 4.5 so you go to 4.5 for five amps and you press slight task and that's it you just gotta wait until this finishes charging generally i think it takes around like 30 minutes it will stop it on its own so that's the good thing about this charger so yeah after you guys like get the fundamental stuff like you know you got your radio you got your drone you got your choice of camera you know the essentials like charger oh you need this one for sure you need the goggle so after you get all these essentials just go out on the field and we'll have fun with your friends because remember like coming from myself personally when i do commercial work it's you're doing it for someone else you're not doing it for yourself so make sure you go out there and you know shoot stuff for fun just like you know get a mental reset you know the barrier of entry to get into fpv filmmaking is to be honest i thought it was really high because i come from like about like a science background but not technical like this electricity i come from a, like a biology background so finance so i don't know anything about this stuff but yeah just the learning curve is high but once you nail it it's, it's just very fun just treat it as a hobby at first once you kind of get the hang of it and you want to make some you know some extra cash from it you get into commercial work so if you're planning to fly fpv for commercial productions then i would rec recommend y'all to study and apply for the part 107 commercial uav exam you can take it at any airport so you just basically just i mean i think that's only applies to america so if you want to make money from fpv then you got to get this license so i like i've talked to like maybe like four or five fpv pilots like locally around southern california and the day rates that i got from them range from 800 on the low end and upwards of 1700 depending on the pilot skills and i guess their branding I have a social media brand for your fpv you can charge pretty high rates too for the pilot to come up with the radio goggles and the drone and the gopro this skill set is like super niche down in the video space so that explains why it's so valuable in the industry and and a lot of businesses want to stand out from the competition with this kind of you know filmmaking style yeah so in 2019 i came into this being authentically curious about the fpv scene created many new opportunities for me as well from just learning the skill set i don't really shoot with my a7s3 as much anymore i'm also filming on the a7s3 right now but i guess that this is what i'm gonna use it for but maybe in like june i'm gonna start to you know invest in a cine lifter maybe i can fly the a7s3 i'm super comfortable with the gopro setup already so i think it's really time to upgrade to the you know the cine lift it's just the type of shots that are like super achievable with these type of drones so aside from the thrill of FPV filmmaking as a hobby, if you were to be hired by like a producer, your rates are pretty much almost as high as the director and the producer. You can collect a pretty fat bag from like FPV filmmaking. It is a very niche skill compared to like regular drones. The journey of learning FPV was a roller coaster for sure. Since I didn't know much about, you know, this kind of technology, I'm just a videographer. So when I got to this, I'm just like, oh my God, I gotta put so much time into learning how to actually fly this thing because it's completely manual. But I already knew videography. I had a background in videography already. I, I knew everything, how to make a video. Combining videography with this thing together, a super skilled person like in the in the production world. So, you know, yet alone learning how to charge the LiPo batteries and you know, it's a course in its own. Overall, I think it's pretty worth it. So whenever I do want to de-stress, go out and fly my drone at the park for fun, not, like, just for myself. And then if you need to collect the bag, go do some commercial work, dude. Like, I think it's chill. So yeah, I hope y'all got some good value from this video. And if y'all got any questions, just let me know in the comments and then yeah, Shout out to my 188 subscribers as of today. I got 188. Last week, I got 144 from the other video. You know, we going up. So yeah, thanks for watching.